It's time to take a ride on the Steelers Afternoon Drive with our co-hosts, Alan Saunders and Zachary Smith. Welcome in to another episode of Steelers Afternoon Drive. I'm Zachary Smith. That is Alan Saunders on a Feel Good Friday. Last episode before Steelers Bills. Alan, how are we feeling? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm 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 fired up actually. I'm I'm ready to go drive in the snow. I'm ready to go cover a playoff game. Uh, I'm ready to go see crazy Bills fans throw people through tables. I'm ready for all of it. I'm I'm ready to go. I'm fired up. Take us a little bit uh, inside here. What, what's the game plan? When are you when are you leaving? Because I can, obviously everybody can see that you are still you got the credentials board in the background, so you're not on your way yet to I mean, Buffalo. No, yeah, we're plan? leaving tomorrow. I don't know, probably around noon. Um, I'm not really anticipating a lot of problems tomorrow. Seems like tomorrow night into Sunday is when the snow starts. We're only a few miles from the stadium where we're staying, so you know it'll take it by ear. It's not uh, you know. They, Buffalo's a weird place, man. It's not like Pittsburgh. Like t- two feet of snow ain't gonna slow that place down. So um, I'm not t- super concerned about us getting this game off or uh, getting there or anything like that. I, I'm I'm trusting of the the people of Buffalo that are gonna take care of business. And you know, now the way home, I don't know. It looks like that could be dicey, but we'll figure it out. Yeah, well, maybe to tell us a little bit, give us a little bit of insight, not only into the weather, but about this game as well. Mookie Hawkins joining us on the show here, Steelers Afternoon Drive. Mookie, what's going on? What's up, guys? How you doing? Fantastic, fantastic. I'm ready to come up your way, Mook. How's the weather? Man, make sure you got some skis on your on the tires. There. <laughs> you know, you, you'll make it pretty, pretty fine. But, uh, I mean... Crazy weather here in Buffalo is always unpredictable. I mean, they say, what, crazy winds, anywhere between one and three feet of snow. But that could be anywhere. That, that could be at Highmark Stadium. That could be, you know, in the heart of the city. Or, you know, it could be in Niagara Falls. You know, where that's going to land, <laughs> we don't know. It's unpredictable. But, you know, as far as game goes right now, uh, there hasn't been no change. I know it's been rumored to be moved to Cleveland or whatever the case. But, um, you know, uh, my guy, Matt Beauvais, he spoke with an NFL spokesperson, so that hasn't been the case. So uh, looks like the game is going to be played, which it should be played in the elements. It's just, hey, you know, hey, don't let the Steelers or or, pitch, or, or the Bills, you know, have, have a home game in this type of weather, and you won't have that problem. But, you know, game is on. What do you remember about that game against the Patriots, that crazy win game a couple of years ago? And do you feel like maybe the Bills – learned anything from that i remember like nobody threw the ball till the end of the game and then buffalo started throwing and it was like oh why didn't they do that from the beginning uh it it worked out maybe better than than they thought it would do you feel like having had that that specific experience might be helpful for the bills oh absolutely i mean especially when you got a guy like josh allen who played at wyoming where it's pretty much the same i mean he's thrown in high winds and cold situations so it's just you know once they figure out i guess how the wind is swirling around in that stadium, then, you know, they know what fits, you know, is it, is it quick game or, you know, can we take a few shots here and there? It depends on how the wind is blowing actually in game. So that's something to definitely keep an eye on. When does both of these teams look to throw the ball and, you know, what situation in game they're going to, you know, pull the trigger on it. Yeah, I think that's interesting. One thing that I've really like thought about with this matchup, and it's funny that uh, I don't know, Alan. Did you see Pony's tweet about Mitch Trubisky? Yeah, <laughs> like have, yeah. Because one thing that like a vast difference, right, is the ability of the quarterbacks, the two starting quarterbacks in this game, to add something with their legs. Josh Allen can still be a weapon, even if this game doesn't necessarily lend his hand to the passing game. Uh, and I wanted to get your thoughts on that as well, just the way that he can still be utilized in the various ways. Oh, with me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, of yeah. course. When you got a guy like that, there's so many things you could do when you have a mobile quarterback and a physical quarterback at that. So this type of weather definitely plays in place for a guy like Josh Allen. Um, you know, he's a physical runner, even though he's a quarterback. And, you know, it's it's never happened where you can just say something like that in a quarterback. <laughs> but I mean, these type of games are built for quarterbacks such as Josh Allen, if it's schemed the right way, right? So um, it's just the flip side on the coin. You can say that with Najee Harris. Here it is. It could fit, you know, the Pittsburgh style of play, too. They're physical, smash mouth, 
And, you know, they rely on the run game to set up the play action. But um, as far as schematically with a guy with Josh Allen, who's fairly accurate on the run as well, um, you know, it's a lot of things you can, you know, do with that. So it's going to be pretty interesting. Uh, he led the team in attempts last week with, with, with 15. And, you know, the mm-hmm. weather wasn't bad up there in Miami. But, you know, with a guy like Josh Allen, um, as far as the weather is concerned, this is one guy that I know that can play in all elements and still play a regular type of game. You know, for some freakish ability this guy has, he could play in these elements like like no problem. So um, it's going to be real interesting to see, you know, how they use his, how, how they run him and how they set up those runs, you know, with him acting like he's going to run and maybe throw it. How, how would that expand the RPO game against the Steelers would probably be the more question that you were looking for, right? <laughs> the two things I'm looking at in this Buffalo offense, you know, besides obviously Josh Allen to me are – the way they've changed their their dynamic after they they fired Ken Dorsey and uh, really got James Cook involved in, in a bigger way. And it just seems like this is an offense that is, I don't know what the right word is, maybe like a little bit more mature, like a little bit grown up. Like they, they're not just like playing backyard ball all the time. Mm-hmm. They're able to uh, go out there and be a little bit more responsible, it feels like, take better care of the football. Do you feel like they're – an offense that is better suited for like playoff football right now than they were maybe in years past. Oh, absolutely. What I doubt. And I, and I think that you, you, you hit it, um, you know, right, right, right on the head there with the maturity portion of it. Cause again, last year, let's not forget this bill's roster was the Super Bowl favorite. And, uh, next year, I mean, they nearly the only person they really lost was Tremaine Edmonds. Um, so you have a better roster basically in my eyes, this year it just didn't materialize everybody wanted to happen then you know the bills have those injuries early on in the season and you know they face a lot of adversity as well but again any team that's used to being and playing surrounded by any type of adversity is this team so they understood the assignment when their back was against the wall having to win five straight and they knew hey we gotta you know still find a way to win you know that's the identity of this team just finding ways to win and now it's a new season. They've been in the playoff mode five weeks ago. So that's the maturity. That's the maturity right there, Alan, that you're probably talking about. You know, they've been in playoff mode five weeks ago. And, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, heading into the playoffs. Steelers have been in that too. They needed to win their last three and get some help to get in. Uh, the other thing that really stands out to me that's different maybe about this Buffalo team, and, man, I feel like we've been talking – to each other a lot, right? This is what the <laughs> sixth time in five years the Steelers are going to play the Bills, which is great. I love, I love mm-hmm. Buffalo. I love the city. I love obviously getting to talk to you. Um, but there's a lot of familiarity here. So when something's different, it it definitely stands out. And man, Dalton Kincaid seems like he's a weapon, mm-hmm. uh, a really exciting young player. Steelers have had trouble with the tight end this year. How do you envision them using him to attack the uh, inside of the Steelers defense that is pretty banged up? Well, if they want to send the house, just just keep in mind we got what uh, Stephon Day is calling Young Superman over here, and he's and he's and he's and he's excelling at the right time. This, you know, and and this is where you want your guys to excel at because now it takes the pressure off of Diggs. You had you can't keep double teaming the guy. You can't keep playing bracket coverage. So the safety valve, the tight end, uh, you know, and he's you know again the top receiver coming out in last year's draft at tight end. So. Uh, you know, over 70 catches, uh, you know, a very productive season for for the rookie. And again, he's making plays at the right time going into uh, the playoffs and the trust that he and Josh has uh, able to obtain during these five game winning streak. It's going to play big dividends come playoff time. Absolutely. I wanted to bring up the guy that's not going to be part of this matchup, but has scored a touchdown the last three times against the Steelers and Gabe Davis. How much does him being out of the lineup affect Buffalo's offense? Because that's a guy, you know, on the box score, whether or not he's putting up numbers, again, his ability to take the top off, leave things up, open underneath for Dalton Kincaid, of course, Stephon Diggs, with him not being a part of this matchup. Who gets more attention here? Does, like, is it a Khalil Shakir type game where he's got the step up, maybe a Trent Sherfield? Who do you think takes on that role? Well, Trent Sherfield takes on that role. Uh, I maybe think that it probably will be a little bit more targets for Shakur. Uh, and, you know, in that regard, because, you know, the, the trust factor, you know, more lies with Shakur than Sherfield because more snaps, obviously. 
Giants. But, um, hey, if it weren't for Sherfield making that catch and Gabe Davis, you know, plays, we won't be talking as a 2C right now. You know, we'll be sure. going somewhere yeah. else, you know, with that. So, um, I think that all those guys are are, are – are, can make plays, you know, when their number is called upon, you know, within the scheme. It's just that how how Brady is going to set the table so guys can eat. You know, he has to set the table pretty good so everybody can eat because he's going to need everybody in order to win against this tough Pittsburgh Steelers team. Yeah, they might be banged up. They might be, you know, missing the T.J. Watt out there. But hmm, Alonzo High, uh, Highsmith? He tore us apart in preseason, and it was 14-zip in, in the first quarter against the ones. So we ain't about to nickname it. You know, I do understand it's preseason, but the confidence that I know that Highsmith has against this team because, hey, he he, he went wild against them, you know, in the preseason. So it's definitely a, a carbon copy of T.J. Watt. You know, you can't replace him, but he definitely is going to give you high energy and a lot of effort coming off that edge. Moogie, it seems like sort of the the prevailing thought about this game is that, you know, the Bills are the better team and probably should win. And that in a lot of ways, uh, you know, it's up to them to not let the Steelers into it. They, they've had a lot of problems with turnovers. Uh, is, is that your take on this? Is this is that the biggest key for the Bills to win this game? Uh, well, yeah. I, everybody talk about the turnovers and then you can't, you know, they did it. They did it all season long. They won five games in a row, right? And they did it the same type of way, you know. Josh, he had his bleeps and blunders, but they they still won five straight. They found a way to win it. So going into the playoffs is like, if he does the turnovers, then they're going to lose. You can't do it in the playoffs. Okay, what's the difference, really? It's, it's the same game, right? You know, if I did it in the regular season, I, how come I can't do it? in the, the the postseason. This Bills defense is keeping this Bills offense in games to the point where I don't want to say they can afford to make those turnovers, but, you know, the defense is clicking. If you really look at why this Bill has been in, in, you know, five games in a row, it's really been on the hats of the defense. Even when they beat the Cowboys, you know, by that wide margin, it was still the defense that created those turnovers. It was still the defense that, you know, was making Dallas go three and outs. They scored the points, but Josh only completed seven passes that game, <laughs> you know? So you tell me I can complete seven teams, seven seven passes, and we blow a, a, a top elite team in the league out? Yeah, no, 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 no. So the defense, which leads the NFL in takeovers, and that's the caveat of it, right? Because uh, uh, Mason Rudolph has not thrown an interception, has not turned the ball over. The Bills can turn the ball over, but on the flip side of that, can Pittsburgh sustain Rudolph in the event of he making one turnover? The confidence to the point where the Bills can make a turnover, they've been there, done that. So it's not going to ride on them as much as it would the next team because I guess they're prone to it. They guess that they're used to having turnovers in the game. So that really don't matter. If they got an opportunity to still claw and fight and have a chance to win it at the end, best believe they're going to be on point and have the best drive of the game to try to pull that out. And they proved that again against Miami. Bad as Josh played in that first half, when it's time to keep that drive together, for some strange reason, this Bills team, and again, that speaks to the maturity you talk about, understanding the assignment, getting the job done when it's needed. That's how they was able to win five in a row. And then they get that takeaway from Taylor Rapp at the end of the game. Uh, Rapp's not going to play this week. Rasul mm-hmm. Douglas didn't practice. It doesn't, I mean, he's questionable, but hard to see a guy who doesn't practice at all play what do the absences of those two guys mean the secondary are we going to see some of my pit boys uh dane jackson and damar hamlin maybe in uh, elevated roles oh absolutely you know in the event that if uh rasul can't you know give it a shot dan is definitely going to go in there he, he's been a starter for the bills for two years you know to the point where i mean this bills team has quality depth probably the best quality depth in the nfl um and it's been on display all season long <laughs> You know, when you lose uh, Tredavious White, you go and trade for Rasul Douglas, but you still don't miss a beat with, with, with Dane Jackson being out there. You still don't miss a beat when you lose Tremaine Edmonds to free agency, then Matt Milano goes down, then Terrell Bernard surfaced to be this animal he is. Tyrell Dotson finally gets things going. He goes down, and then Baylor Specter comes in and 
they don't miss a beat against Miami, <laughs> you know. So the quality depth, you know, you know, has been, you know, shown on in this season with these guys. So, um, again, I don't think that, you know, that would change. Don't forget we got Kyrie Elam that can play as well. Yeah. You know, yeah. so they, we have the quality depth. He's a first-round pick. So it will be great to see DeMar Hamlin out there at safety, you know, helping out, playing with a little dime coverage as need be. And, you know, obviously Dane is going to be out there. So hell to pit. Hell to pit. <laughs> Love it. I, I did want to bring up uh, the running back, James Cook, because I feel like you can make the argument that he's big, the biggest beneficiary of the switch from Ken Dorsey uh, to Joe Brady, just his impact on the football field as a runner, as a pass catcher. Obviously, you got Leonard Fournette, Latavius Murray in the mix, but really that's been his backfield. Um, what have you seen from him? What does what that switch have? Well, it, first off, do you agree with that, that there, he's been a different back since Joe Brady took over as the OC? And what has kind of been that switch that's flipped? Well, yeah, he's he's definitely, you know, flourished under Brady than rather a Dorsey. And I can take it all the way back to – beginning of the season when we went against the Jets and, you know, the Bills tried to start off the way they ended the season and the Jets wouldn't allow them to do it. And, you know, they struggled and they lost the game. Weeks two, three, and four, the Bills focused on having a lot of balance. And that's when you've seen complimentary football at its best. Week two, week three, week four. You can go back to those games where they just clearly dominated the Raiders. They clearly dominated uh, Washington and obviously Miami you know, going into that week with lots of balance there. For some strange reason, they left that identity in London, you know, and then they was never able to regain that balance. Dorsey wanted to, you know, just stay vertical with a vertical passing game no matter what. And teams wasn't playing Josh Allen no more. Teams were just playing Kent Dorsey, you know, because things were, you know, vanilla and predictable. And for you to have an elite quarterback and an elite offense with the tools you have, uh, you know, certain situations of games just looked at look at basic. And, you know, that's where the Bills team struggled. And, you know, it was time for a coaching change, a new spark. Josh wasn't really himself. Uh, you took an element away from his game, which is running the football, you know, and trying to be more of a pocket passer. And that really didn't work for, you know, Josh's confidence and his psyche and his him, which made him the player that he is. So, Everything's back to normal now, uh, you know, and the guys is on a five game winning streak, you know, if they can keep it going and add to that again, you know, him and Stefan Diggs that hasn't really connected the way they want to, but it's coming, you know, it, it's coming. So, you know, that's the scary thing about this team. That's an Luke, you got point, a, uh, Oh, good. Go me. Well, I was just saying, what, what do you think the reason is for that? That Josh Allen and Stefan Diggs this season for whatever, just haven't been had that same chemistry as like the past couple. Well, again, you got the coaching change, right? So things do alter on, sure. you know, getting the pressure off digs, even though it may look like his production is down and things of that nature. But to win in the playoffs, you got to get other guys involved as well. Other guys have to pose a threat to you out there. And this day and age of analytics and all that stuff that we do is easy to scout the next opponent than how it used to be back in the day. So everybody has to get involved. So I think Brady more or less focused on the other pieces around Josh and, and, and Stefan to get those guys going, get that run game going. Uh, your run sets up your pass with your tight end and things of that nature. If they want to bracket sticks and, and double him at times, then other guys have to make plays in order for this offense to thrive. And, you know, who's to say they can preserve him? He just digs and took some shots in some games. You know, he ain't appeared on an injury report, but as a coach, mm -hmm. you figure that, I'm not going to force on the ball, risk injury to the guy where we need him down the stretch as well. So uh, I think that was probably more or less of that as well, trying to preserve your number one wide receiver. You don't we just want to force him uh, every the ball, and then all of a sudden he's taking unnecessary shots as, to the point where he'll get hurt, and you don't have him for this playoff run right now. Mookie, you, you sure. talk to these guys. You're on the inside there in Buffalo. What is – what is Stevon Diggs like as a teammate? What do people think of him? I know there's this perception that he can be, I, I don't know, something of a, of a, of a, I don't want to say head case because that's the wrong word, but maybe just a guy who can be um, unpleasant at times, but it was named a team captain. We see this from wide receivers. I feel like all the time where they're, they're just kind of different cats and maybe they get taken the wrong way. What is he really like? And, and what do you, <laughs> what do you see from him? You know, he's a regular guy, but I can say I can't say he's a different guy, 
but he's, he he kind of is. Um, he he's he's just a fiery guy, you know. And again, it, it, that's just the passion of a receiver. They always want to say the receivers are divas and stuff like that. But when a guy want to just show how much of a dog he is, it's considered oh uh, he's being a diva and oh he wants to leave and stuff like that. If I'm a captain on the team, I should be able to voice my opinion. <laughs> No matter what, that's why you named me a captain. This is who I am. I'm not going to nickname anything. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. But I'm always, Stefan Diggs has always been a team guy, and he always led by example. Um, it's just that, you know, I guess at times media take his words out of context. Whatever went on in Minnesota has not happened here, and everybody wants to bring that back. Like, whatever it was, who knows what happened in in Minnesota. It hasn't happened here and everybody wants it to happen so bad. Like if he farts wrong, then, Oh, Diggs don't want to be in Buffalo. You know, that's all you hear now. He don't want to be in Buffalo. Where else would he rather go? You're getting paid top dollar. You're playing with one of the best quarterbacks in the game and you're contenders. You, 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 you had over a hundred catches each year. You know, nobody's done that in the Bills uniform and over a thousand yards, you know? So, it hasn't been Diggs. He's been very productive and he's been consistent. So um, he's he's a fiery guy. He just wants to win. And he feels that at times, uh, if he's not getting the ball in them, in them clutch moments, how can he help his team win? So you and me and everybody else would feel a certain kind of way if that was the case. If you bringing me here to, 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 to be that guy in need, and then, you know, when that happens – you know, that's not my fault, but I, I feel bad because I want to be there for my team. That's just all Steph Diggs is saying. But other than that, he he loves Buffalo. He don't want to leave. Uh, he loves his quarterback. And you see that. You saw that in the uh, NFL Films clip when Josh was talking about plays, how he loved to play, how they communicating. So, you know, they they in the locker room yesterday just, just chilling, him and Josh. You know, Josh had his locker, you know. So it's, you know. Everything is cool, man. <laughs> Everything. I feel like we have a lot of the same stuff here with George Pickens and Deontay Johnson, and they've certainly had their their moments uh, on the field where things didn't go very well and maybe they didn't do what they probably should have done. But uh, I don't get the sense that there's a whole lot of, you know, I've never gotten the sense that that kind of distrust or, or dislike ever flowed to the locker room, same, same kind of thing. And we're seeing, I don't know what it is with receivers. We're seeing AJ Brown now and in, in Philly, I guess he deleted yeah. everything about the Eagles from social media this week uh, before the playoffs. I don't know. <laughs> why we always got, it's always the receivers. I don't know why it's always the receivers. Cause That's they want to, they, they want to make a difference in the game. And, and, and I get it at times when you figure like with Dorsey, how do you scheme Stefan Diggs open? When you look at guys like CD lamb, Tyree kill, you don't think they're getting doubled and bracketed. But their coordinators are scheming them open. I mean, you guys dealt with a, a, a coordinator change as well up there in Pittsburgh. So, like, you got to understand how those guys feel. If you're bringing me here to be that guy, and I see Justin Jefferson getting 15 targets and 100 catches every week where he's being doubled and bracketed, how come that can't happen with me? I mean, he's not going to say that. But I see the game, too, and I want to say it. Like, how do these coaches can't scheme him open? You know, it's their job to scheme the guys open, and that could be frustrating for a quarterback wide receiver connection, you know. So that's just how it goes at times, you know. But, you know, they, they, they figured it out. They're getting things going. And, you know, leaders lead by example. They don't they don't jump off the wheelbarrow like uh, Stefan Diggs said yesterday. They, 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 stay, they stay in the wheel better together and, you know, keep it rolling. These are the first two teams to make the playoffs after firing their offensive coordinator. <laughs> Since the Ravens did it in 2012, they went on to win the Super Bowl. So I guess that means whoever wins this week is just <laughs> they're going. Yeah. That's that's the way it is. Way it Luke, you have a uh, do you have a prediction? Do you want to give a, whether it's a score or just something you the way you see this game uh, playing out? All right, y'all interrogated me. Let me interrogate y'all. All right, bit. bring it on. Let me interrogate y'all a little bit. Is it just me or Mike Tomlin never, ever, ever having a losing record? Like, nobody really gives it its credit that that deserves. Like, like I don't know. Like, he should get a ring or something like that automatically. Like, like how long does this streak has to continue before he's, like, officially recognized? It's like, it got to be a record or something. Like, he, he deserves a Super Bowl trophy just because of just that alone. Like, that's – I mean – 
It's not just getting his just due. Why is that? I don't think he cares about it that much. So I think that's probably one of the reasons is like, he doesn't really like it when we bring it up. Uh, he he kind of downplays it every chance he gets. So I think that's probably one of the reasons it is incredible, especially when you look at like some of the years and some of the things that happened in those years, you know, the year that played half the year with doc Hodges and you know, all, all that stuff. And so uh, it's, um, it's definitely kind of crazy that he, you know, that it's happened that way. And, and certainly, you know, like, look, he's, if he'd have had one year that he was eight and or whatever, seven, seven and nine, not like it would take away from his career, but mm-hmm. it's an, it's a pretty incredible accomplishment. And how many years has he been a coach of Pittsburgh? 17. 17. 17 Come years. on, man. And now, Alan, you know what this shows me though? You know what this shows me? The fact that that, that's the first thing that Mookie wanted to ask about in terms of the Pittsburgh Steelers just goes to show, and we talk about it all the time, how different Mike Tomlin is viewed outside of Pittsburgh as opposed to inside of Pittsburgh. It's incredible. There was a point this year, man, they lost that game to the the Patriots and the Cardinals, and I bet about uh, three-quarters of Pittsburgh was ready to run them out of town. And uh, here they are in the playoffs again. Another 10-win season this time. We'll see where it goes from here, but Man, I'm, coming uh, y'all locker, I'm coming in y'all locker room. Me and Coach Tom are going to talk about this. <laughs> talk about Man, another question, Ireland. So, yeah, just like you mentioned, they want to run him out of town. Like, literally, I mean, 17 years straight and not a losing season. Bill Belichick finished 4 and 12 this year, or 4 and whatever is right. They had a losing season. Yeah. Bill Belichick. Mike Tomlin has never, ever, ever, <laughs> ever experienced right. that. 17 years of head coach. You got to be kidding me. I mean, he's going to downplay it because it's him. He's not going to walk around with his chest stick out. He, he leaves that for guys like us to talk about. But it should give way more. I, I think the NFL is not showing his proper due with that right there. Because if Bill Belichick won 17 straight seasons without a loss, we'll be talking all different about him again. You know what I mean? So that's all I'm saying. He deserves his just doing that to the point where – is he burnt out in Pittsburgh? Let me ask you guys that before we get out of here. Is Tomlin burnt out? I mean, the fans is giving him that much, you know, to the point where he, he's thinking about stepping away to have that consideration after winning, having a winning season for 17 years. You need a break. It's possible. I mean, if, I mean, Jay Glazer's his boy. That's, that's his guy. If, if that, yeah. like, if it was just regular, Media speculation, random talking heads, I would put zero stock into it. But I think when Jay Glazer talks about Mike Tomlin, I listen. Whether or not, like, Mm -hmm. look, Tomlin takes singularly focused to an unhealthy extreme. (laughs) I'm sure that he has not given one actual millisecond of thought about his future at any point in the last month as he's been coaching his butt off to try to get this team back to where it is right now after having like a 4% chance of making the playoffs in the middle of December, right? He's not worried about that right now, but if he's, but if, if guys that he trusts in the media are bringing it up, both the idea that he could be traded to another team or the idea that he could step away for the, you know, this year, it, that to me just means that he's had those thoughts that the, and, and probably has, has spoken those thoughts to somebody that, that maybe there's an end to the road in Pittsburgh for him where he's maybe he's done what he could do here. Maybe the message gets stale. Maybe he just wants something fresh and new. I don't know. You know, his kids are grown. Uh, his youngest daughter is going to college this year. Um, you know, it's some of my daughters in high school, I'm looking, I know I'm counting down those days, man. I'm like, all right, get, <laughs> get out of here. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be free. I'm going to go do my own thing. Like right. <laughs> so maybe it's just that time of his life. I don't know, but I think it's certainly, I think if the people that are talking about it are talking about it, then we have to consider that, that, that it's real and not just something that's made up by the media. Right. 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 17 years. Up. It's the first time that this thought has entered my mind whatsoever. Yeah. 17. I ain't never had a losing season. Never. Mm-hmm. Like never with the teams that I've had, whatever y'all dealt me 17 years, <laughs> I've come out on a winning side of it. Every single year It's not getting the credit it deserves, man. I, he's going to downplay it because it's him. He's not going to walk around. Yeah, look at me, 17-year-old. We all should be talking about that. Like, who's ever done that? Nobody. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, he deserves a trophy or something 
Like I feel like we could use the most recent example, like this season, right? Three quarterbacks, no Cam Hayward for eight weeks, no Minka Fitzpatrick for as long as he's missed. I mean, there's like this year's a good example of it kind of being ridiculous to even be ten and seven. Right. You you just in a coordinator change. Yeah. You sure. Know? Thomas Pierce fired a coordinator since World War II. Yeah. <laughs> like really, and 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 and, and you in the playoffs, baby. You are in the playoffs. Terrible times. You ain't got too far to travel. You know, you're in the playoffs, and this is what this guy gets. Oof. Oof. Yeah, y'all, y'all tough. Y'all tough in Pittsburgh, baby. They are. They are tough. <laughs> I always tell this. This is what I tell people from out of town all the time. They ask me, why, do, why don't Steelers fans like Mike Tomlin? I was like, because if you are only a Steelers <laughs> fan and you don't pay attention to the rest of the NFL, unless you were alive in 1968, he's the worst coach you've ever known. And yet he's still going to the Hall of Fame. Steelers fans are a little bit spoiled. Like that's just the way it is. Like <laughs> they've had yeah. a lot of success here, and there's a really high expectation for more of it. Do you know how many people in the NFL would love to have a coach that's <laughs> never had a losing season? Just about everybody else. <laughs> yeah, that's what I figure. Yeah, that's that's a great question. And he's well respected by players. In other locker rooms, so well, you see what kind of interest Bill Belichick is still getting around the NFL after going four and twelve last year. Exactly. Uh, so, and he's what, fifteen years older, something like that. Yeah, something like uh, that. All right, we got to give predictions. <laughs> Whoever wants to go first, I don't know, Mookie, what you got? We'll let the, we'll let the guess. Uh, I say wins play a factor in it a little bit. I, I, I'm what keys to victories the Bills need to do. They need to win on first and second downs and force uh, Rudolph in the passing situation. And if they can do that, then, you know, the Bills will definitely have a good chance on winning. Offensively, the Bills just have to have some balance. Get the run game going. Set your play action up. Hit your tight end. Take your shots with digs. Um, again, weather will play a factor, so it's going to be a slow start. I say 21-17 Bills. I think the Bills are going to be able to throw the ball more than maybe people think. I think they learned something from that last game. Like like you said, I, I trust Josh Allen in just about any weather uh, to throw the ball. So I think they're going to be able to move the ball. I totally agree about the Steelers have to stay out of obvious passing situations. You know, They really have not been in one in this three-game run with Mason Rudolph, and I really think that's been a big key to their success. And Buffalo is certainly capable of putting them into one. Uh, I think the the weather will be some factor, but I'm I'm not thinking it's going to be some kind of you know seven nothing game. I think the Bills will be able to move the ball and score. I think the Steelers will just not be able to stay with them. I'll say Buffalo twenty three fourteen. Mm, okay, so on my other podcast that I host <laughs> on Tuesday, I had to give a prediction. I've adjusted it slightly uh, as the week has gone on here. Um, I'm going Bills. 20 i'm gonna go with a weird score here 22 to 13 bills <laughs> somebody's gonna say screw the extra points we're going for two uh, hey hey well, like, like in that stadium point. too man the way the winds win yeah. mm-hmm. there could be one end where nobody will dare kick an extra point and at the other end mm-hmm. maybe guys will be trying 60 yarders just because like <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, that top of door open back there. You know, you never know what. what you never know. There. Never know what it's going to be till you get there. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that part of it as well. We might see, we might see some missed extra points, and we might see an NFL record long field goal in the same game. Who knows? Yeah, yeah exactly. For it. That's definitely what I want to see. How that's going to affect the, the extra points or field goal situations if teams do decide, hey, we just got to go for it on fourth down or. We can't kick the extra point. We have to go for two here. So, you know, that's something things to watch out in this game as well. Thanks for coming on, Mookie, so much. We appreciate it. Uh, you can find Mookie's stuff on Twitter at uh, WUFO Sports. And Mookie covers uh, the Bills and all kinds of stuff up there in Buffalo. <laughs> and excited to see you. And uh, hopefully we get in with no problems and it's not a, a bleary eyed version of me on Sunday morning. Uh, I have sleeping in my car or some kind of nonsense, but uh, hopefully we get up there. No problem. And uh, uh, tell the salt truck guys to do a good job for me. All right. Absolutely. Hey, but don't forget to pack your skis just in case. All right? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Hey, my guy. Thanks for having me. Al and Zach. Thanks. Boogie. Yeah. Thanks. Boogie. Yep. Take care. All right. Awesome stuff. Awesome guest. Mookie Boogie was awesome. Crazy, yeah. Uh, Alan, we know where we can find Mookie now. We know that we can find you in Buffalo for this game. Where else can people find you? At A. Saunders underscore PGH on Twitter. PGH Steelers now. SteelersNow.com. That's pretty much it. 
There we go. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell here. Leave us a comment. We want your predictions in the comments as well. Anything that we touched on in this episode, future questions, all that good stuff. Yeah, get we your hope. predictions in there. I want to know. I want to know. I heard. I saw the comments saying I was unduly negative. I want them in writing now. Let's see. Let's see who's right. <laughs> I'm not saying I want the Steelers to lose. I'm just saying you got to put it. Yeah. You got to put a number down too if you're gonna if you're gonna if sure. you're gonna talk mess on mine. That's what. That's only fair. I agree. I wholeheartedly agree. Um, if leave us a five star review if you are listening somewhere else. We hope that this is not the last podcast that we will have recorded of this 2023 2024 Steelers season. But regardless, we will be back on Monday to talk about this game, which is hopefully a win. I'm Zachary Smith, PGH for Alan Saunders and myself. Thanks for jumping in and take another ride on the Steelers afternoon drive. <laughs>